This OpenAI Whisper C++ model is a game changer because it enables people to do speech to text on edge fairly accurately and that means you don't have to do any API calls to the cloud or remote servers or anything like that. It's all on the device. You're doing the speech to text on the device which is pretty awesome. You don't need Wi-Fi, you don't need an Ethernet connection. So let's dive on in into quantization first and then we'll go from there. The goal is to figure out which model and which quantization runs best on the Raspberry Pi in regard to speed and accuracy and that type of thing. Here this is a nice link at NVIDIA describing quantization it's the process of converting continuous values to discrete set of values using linear or nonlinear scaling techniques. Okay, and then why do this? Okay, here we go. Int 8 is computationally less expensive and has lower memory footprint. It has uh, faster inference and similar performance. So that's why we do this and uh, also what quantization is. Here's the setup. Raspberry Pi Model 4B, 4 gigabytes of RAM, running the Raspbian 64-bit OS desktop version. I'm going to try to save you some time and headaches and that sort of thing so you don't have to go through uh, some of the issues I faced. If you see an error like this exec error, well, do yourself a favor and delete your old Whisper install and reinstall it. Um, the Quanti stuff, it looks like it was added around May or June of 2023. Um, so yeah, just do yourself a favor, uh, save yourself the headaches. Now I experimented with a bunch of different models. I don't recommend going beyond the original base model. The quantized base and the 8-bit, 4-bit, 5-bit quantized base, they work okay, but I wouldn't do anything like the small model or any of the quantized small models. These are just too big. Um, anything bigger than, I would say, mm, 100 megabytes, I, I wouldn't suggest on a Raspberry Pi. Here's some of the details here. The load time is just too much on the original base model. I made a previous video showing the install. Here's what the install folder looks like. Notice that none of these files are in here. The bench, quantizer, stream. To get these you have to type make and then what you're looking to do. So for example, make bench, make quantize, make stream, and then each one has its folder. What happens is you when you type make stream, it's going to compile this and then output this. And then you can use this, you run this, and this is going to be used for your streaming audio, speech to text. Here's what I did. Copied these two lines here over to my terminal and replaced base with tiny because I'm most interested in the tiny model right now. We're taking the input model, which is this one, which already exists. It's on the machine in this folder, in the models folder. And then we're outputting this file here, which is en and then dash q5 and then at the end it says q5 we're quantizing to five bits I'm going to do the same thing with the tiny model quantize it with 4 bit and 8 bit here we go that was quick I'm going to play the first 30 seconds of audio on this podcast and we're going to see how the model does in accuracy. Here we go, test number one. Following this conversation with Ilya Zizgever, co-founder and chief scientist of OpenAI, one of the most cited computer 
scientists in history with over 165,000 citations, and to me, one of the most brilliant and insightful minds ever in the field of deep learning. There are very few people in this world who I would rather talk to and brainstorm with about deep learning, intelligence, and life in general than Ilya, on and off the mic. This was an And there you have it. I broke this into pieces a little bit to make it more readable and easy to count the words in each section. Each section is either like split by a comma or a period. Also, I wasn't too picky in regard to uh, punctuation. I was mostly focused on words. So here's the 4-bit um, quantized accuracy. Uh, I define it as um, this is the perfect translation and then this is the actual translation. So here's the number of words in each, sec in each section which is split up by commas or periods and then uh, the number of words right. So for example the first sentence I said four out of eight words were right. The first sentence is, the following is a conversation with Ilya Satskever. Well, it didn't do so well on the name at the end. So, you know, it tried, but it kind of messed up. But it did get some of them, the following conversation with. So it got four out of eight on the first sentence. So I went through each section and then added it all up and in the end it was about 83 percent accurate which was a lot better than I expected once again I was not super picky about the uh, punctuations but it did decent on the words so next I'm going to work my way up and go to the 8-bit quantized version of the tiny model I'm going to do some benchmarking and I'll share the results here. To do this, what you do is copy and paste this line here, this make bench, just like this, make bench, and then take this line here, copy and paste this. With the model you wanna benchmark, So I'm going to start with the smallest, well, the tiniest one, which is the tiny 4-bit quantized. And then here are the results. Load time, 828 milliseconds. And code time, a little over 8,000 milliseconds. So I'm going to add this to my spreadsheet and post the results. I've noticed something interesting in regard to the benchmarking. The first time benchmarking any given model, for example, here's the tiny model, 4-bit quantized. The load time is 809 milliseconds. Now, I, I did the benchmarking again right after, and look at the load time. Dramatically lower. So, it should, if I do it again, be dramatically lower again. And it's like, uh, each time you restart your computer, it goes back to the um, higher load time. So assuming I'm going to be loading eventually the same model repeatedly, I'm going to go with the best load time and record that into my spreadsheet. Here's some info in regard to the relation between step time and encoder time. It's saying that the the step in stream should be at least two times the encoder time. That's good to know. It also talks about streaming on Raspberry Pis. We're in the operating system task manager and currently CPU usage is 2%, it's like hovering between, I would say, like 1 and 10% on average. Memory usage is 854 megabytes. 
All right, let's see what happens if I run this, the quantized 8-bit tiny model. Here we go. CPU usage, 64%, 56, 88%, 96%, 95%. Let's see, we're drawing half an amp normally here. Uh, 5 volts going to the Pi. Let's launch it and see what we get. Testing one two. Not an amp. Testing one two. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. I'll put the relevant links in the description. And take care. Happy making. Happy experimenting. And uh, this is an exciting time.